guys. So today I'm gonna show you two fantastic lava cakes that are light and cakey on the outside and warm and ooey and gooey on the inside. My kind of dessert. So first, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my red velvet lava cakes. And if you know me, I love all things red velvet. I love red velvet cookies. I love red velvet cupcakes. Tia's favorite dessert. Even our wedding cake was red velvet. Ugh. And I love red velvet lava cakes. So let's do this. <laughs> Why not, right? Before I get into the steps, I wanna give you guys actually a little tip. This is Tia Mori's quick fix, and I'm all about just giving you guys tips to make your experience in the kitchen better. I like to prep whatever vessel I'm using when I'm baking first. I'm doing this because I don't want my batter to sit. If I start with my batter um, and I don't have anything prepped, then my batter's gonna end up sitting for a while and then it won't leave me with a really nice, moist cake. So don't skip this step. Prep, it's all about the prepping here, okay? <laughs> all right, so let's do this. Take some butter and you can use your hand and I'm just gonna spread my butter all over. So I wanna make sure my ramekins are well greased because I don't want my lava cakes sticking. Once I take these bad boys out, I just want them to slide out nice and easy. I'm going to add some sugar to this. And a lot of people will line their ramekins with flour, but I don't wanna do that. Because if you do, when you take your lava cakes out, you'll see the white flour along the outsides of the cake. And we don't want that. We want this to be really nice and pretty. <laughs> Just gonna add a little bit of sugar here. So I wanna make sure, again, that the sugar is coated along the sides, at the bottom, and whatever is left over, I'm just gonna dump it into the next ramekin. All right, so my ramekins are nice and prepped. I'm just gonna push them aside and start working on my wet ingredients. Right in front of me, I have a big mixing bowl. You want it to be a nice size because you're gonna be dumping lots of ingredients in there. And to this, I'm gonna add some eggs. So I have two eggs here and an extra yolk. Extra yolk is gonna make this batter really nice and rich. Add some sugar, and now I'm just gonna mix away. So I'm looking for my eggs and my sugar to blend nicely and to look nice and frothy. <laughs> now onto my favorite part about anything red velvet. It's, I mean, the chocolate. So right here I have some white chocolate with some butter that I've melted in the microwave. I've done this in 20 second increments and I did that because I don't want my chocolate to burn. You can use whatever chocolate you want. You can use dark chocolate, but what I like to do is use the white chocolate because when I add the red color um, to the chocolate, it just gives you a really nice bright red. Whenever adding something hot to eggs, you wanna make sure that you just kind of do it nice and slow because you don't want your eggs to actually cook. The way to prevent that is to keep whisking as you're adding. So you're gonna be using two hands, right? So what I like to do is I like to add a dish towel up under the bowl that I have right here because if I don't, the bowl's just gonna start sliding forward and I don't want that to happen. I kinda wanna anchor it a little bit. I'm gonna use this hand to basically slowly pour my melted white chocolate and butter. And then with my right hand, I'm just gonna whisk away. So you see, the dish towel is allowing the bowl that I have on the bottom to not move. Now on to the color. I'm just gonna add a little bit of red color. Here we go. Look at that! <laughs> oh, this is nice and red, bright red. I have a, an interesting memory about when I made these dark chocolate red velvet cupcakes and it was for this Halloween competition show and I was so nervous because I was going head to head with this very famous cake decorator. Oh my gosh, he kept on making jokes. <laughs> Oh man, whenever I think about red velvet, I always go to that memory. It was a lot of fun. I actually 
um, shot this competition show in Vegas. So it, it was it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. So this looks really nice and red. And now I'm just gonna add my dry ingredients to this bowl. I'm gonna start with my flour. Get in there. Awesome. To add another chocolate flavor to these red velvet lava cakes, I'm gonna add some cocoa powder. There we go. And then I'm gonna add some salt. So my dry ingredients are in and I'm just gonna lightly fold. And this is really important because you don't want your cake to be tough. You want it to be really nice and light. So I'm just gonna just not overwork this batter. I just wanna fill this up about three quarters of the way. So I'm using a scooper because I want my lava cakes to come out even. I'm gonna put this into the oven at 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. How you know that it's done is you wanna make sure that the outside is really nice and firm and the inside is jiggly. Jiggly, 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 jiggly. <laughs> jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. And you wanna make sure that you don't over bake because you'll lose the ooey gooey center. You're talking to a red velvet lover. And you can't have red velvet lava cakes without cream cheese. I know that there's some sort of controversy out there. Whipped cream, hmm, or cream cheese. Well, guess what? I'm a cream cheese kind of girl, okay? So while my lava cakes are in the oven, baking away, I'm gonna work on my icing. In this mixing bowl, I have room temperature cream cheese. And I like it when it's at room temperature because it just makes mixing easier. You don't get any clumps, you know what I mean? No clumps here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mix this away. I'm gonna add some powdered sugar. Whisk away. So if your icing tends to stick while using a whisk, what I like to do is just kind of hit it on the side like that and you see, all of it comes off. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to get into a little fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> to fight with icing. Now I'm gonna add vanilla extract, just a little bit, just a dash. Ugh, this is smelling and looking amazing already. And now I'm gonna add some milk. So the consistency that I'm looking for is an icing consistency. If it's too thick, then you need some more liquid. If it's too drippy, I need more powdered sugar. So this is starting to look great, starting to look like some icing, something that I can drizzle Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle <laughs> over my lava cakes. And I'm just gonna set this aside. So I've taken my lava cakes out of the oven. I let them cool down for about three minutes so that I can handle them. And I'm gonna take this knife and just loosen up the cake along the edges here. You want the outside to be nice and firm and then you want the center to just jiggle a little bit. There we go. Jiggling baby, we're jiggling baby, we're jiggling baby. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna flip this bad boy over. Place this on top and just give it a nice little flip. Voila, pretty, pretty, pretty. Did you see how easy that was? So I'm just gonna pour this icing and just let gravity do the rest. Isn't this beautiful? So why pay seven to eight dollars at a restaurant when you can actually make this divine lava cake at home for a fraction of the cost? Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's cut into this lava cake. <laughs> Delicious. First lava cake down, I mean, this would definitely have to be my favorite. Now on to a plain chocolate lava cake that my son would absolutely love, and hopefully you too. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is, again, grease my ramekin, and I've just greased it with some butter, and this time, instead of using sugar, I'm gonna use cocoa powder so that my lava cakes don't stick. Now onto my wet ingredients. And again, everything is the same with just a few tweaks. So to my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add my two eggs and my egg yolk. I'm gonna add some sugar, give it a nice whisk to make sure the sugar just melts. Actually, that's what it's doing. 
just combine with the eggs. And again, we're looking for a frothy consistency. So instead of using white chocolate, I'm using dark chocolate. So I've melted my chocolate down with some butter. And you really can use any kind of chocolate you want. This looks amazing, it smells great. And now onto my dry ingredients. I'm gonna add some flour, cocoa powder, and salt. And now I'm just gonna nicely fold all of my ingredients. All right, this looks amazing. Now I'm just gonna add my chocolate batter into my ramekins, scoop them in, and I'm gonna bake these lava cakes at 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. So I've pulled my chocolate lava cakes out of the oven. I've let them cool down for two to three minutes, and now we are about to dress these bad boys up. <laughs> Voila! Now I'm gonna add some whipped cream. Oh, yes, yes! Add some raspberries. Now let's see this bad boy ooze delicious chocolate. Now this is heaven. I hope you've enjoyed these lava cakes. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite and make sure you subscribe to Tia Mori's Quick Fix and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!